this is your friend Pritam and today I am going to guide you step by step in writing the C code for the DFS algorithm. If you do not know anything about the DFS algorithm then I suggest you to go to my other video and know about the DFS algorithm. In this code basically I will write the C code for DFS algorithm using an adjacency list. Let's start. So we will take the input from my input and convert it into adjacency list. And then apply the DFS algorithm and print the DFS screen or screen in case of a screen. Now let us see what you can do. An edge list is a list that contains all the edges of a graph. It contains the starting and the ending vertex of each and every edge. So the first edge is between 0 and 1, so it's 0, 1. Then it's 0, 4, 1, 2, 1, 3. 1, 4, 2, 3, and 3, 4 in that. Next we form the adjacency list. So the adjacency list is a list that contains the vertices that are adjacent to a particular vertex. For the 0 vertex it is 1, 4, similarly for the 2, 3 and the other vertex. Now if you got some idea about the DFS algorithm, you will know how the final output of the DFS tree will start from the 0 vertex and then slowly move towards to 1, from 1 I move to 2 and from 2 to 3 and to 4. So I have covered all the vertices in order to reduce my DFS tree. So let's begin. So we are going to start by making the input file, which is in our case the edge list. So we will enter the edge list. One by one we are going to enter every edge, the starting and the end vertices of each and every edge. And we are going to save it in a file called graph.txt. Since we have got seven edges, so there will be only seven rows one row corresponding to each edge okay so that's it we are done next we are going to start writing our original code for the DSS algorithm so let's start so we will start by creating the header file in this project, we go need only just two header files, stdio.h and stdlib.h. So we are going to type in those. So next, we write our main function. The first job we are going to do is open the file that contains my edge list. Okay. So we we'll just create a file pointer file star fp and we are going to open it using the fopen function so i just write grab.txt in the source file and i'm going to open it in the read mode which is indicated by r now i'm going to calculate the number of vertices so we will just write while Okay, now I need two variables, one corresponding to each column in the my graph.txt. So I just uh, take two variables, sn and dn, and where n signifies the number of vertices. So I just scan the columns using my scan function, and we are going to scan up till the end of file is reached. So we are now going to check if either of Sn or Dn is greater than N, then we are going to continue. Else if N is greater than, I mean Sn is greater than Dn or Dn is greater than Sn, then we are going to do update the value of N, right? Now we are going to calculate the degree list of each and every vertex. By degree, I mean the number of edges that are incident on a particular vertex. We will first declare an array for my degree list. We are going to allocate the array dynamically using the malloc or the calloc function. Here we are going to use the calloc function. The calloc function generally reads, I mean, it just returns a white pointer to the memory it has just allocated and initializes the memory to zero. Okay, so I'm going to use my calloc function. So 
it has got two arguments n for the number of blocks and the other argument is for the size of each and every block. So, I dynamically allocated the memory for my degree list and I am going to calculate my degree list. First of all, I need to bring my pointer, the file pointer back to the beginning of the file. So I use a rewind function for that, rewind fp, which is my file pointer. So once it is done, we are ready for just calculating the degree list. So let's start by making the degree list. So we'll do it in a similar fashion. We just again start by writing the while loop while uh, f scan f fp comma we just again take the same variables as my previous while loop now we're going to run it again till the end of file but now what we are going to do is very simple we are now going to calculate the degree so for the degree is what we do we run the loop and increment the degree of s and n by one. The relation is one plus the D and minus one plus. Now let us form the adjacency list. So we just declare a variable called adjacency list. The pointer variable takes a double pointer since it's a two-dimensional array. So we allocate it dynamically like the previous allocations but here we have to mention that it's a int star star instead of int star this is a double pointer so it's now basically a array of pointers so now I allocate each and every cell of the pointer array by the respective degree list so I run a, run a for loop from 0 to L and now I'm going to allocate the memory like degree list of each and every vertex, comma size of it. That's obvious because we are making an integer array. So once it's done, next we are ready for doing the next step. Now you might be wondering that uh, why am I doing all of the calculations in different loops? Because one calculation is required for the other like I require n for the calculation of degree list and similarly I require the degree list for the calculation of uh, adjacency list so now next what we are doing is we just declare a count variable this is just a counter thing and we just allocate it again dynamically it's an array of size n only corresponding to each and every vertex I rewind fp so now I'm just making my adjacency list so again we start in a similar fashion, we just write while let's get it and the same thing. So again we will use the same variables S and DN and we will run the loop up till end of file. Now pay attention. So now we do like adjacency list of S and minus 1 and count of s n minus 1 plus plus so i am increasing the count to indicate that i have covered one vertex and that will be obviously equal to dn the other vertex since there is an h between s n and dn similarly we will do like adjacency list of dn minus 1 and the count of dn minus 1 plus plus is equal to s n okay so this will allocate my adjacency list of the Make my adjacency list. Now I close my file pointer, which is fp. So once we are done with this, we will check our adjacency list. So the adjacency list is we just print the adjacency list. So we run a loop from 0 to n. First, print the vertices and their degrees. So, we'll print i and degree of i. And then I again. 
again start a for loop from r to the degree i mean j equals to 0 to the degree of j and i do j plus plus so now here i do one thing Treat my adjacent to left, but here I first do a minus minus. There's a significance of this minus minus. If all the algorithm starts there, execution from the first address, but a still address begins the addressing from zero. That's why we do a minus minus to make a synchronization between them. So next we'll just execute this part in order to check our adjacent to left. Okay, so we will run this in our terminal. Here is the so let me check this. Now we are ready for executing it. So let me just open the file. Okay, so once it is done, I just TCC and the FHC. Oh my god, there's some errors now. The warnings and some errors. So okay, I can go to the number line. So we found it out. Here is my list. This shows my list. So one part of my program is done, and I have formed my adjacent list. The next part is applying the DFS algorithm on the adjacent list. So we will start that part. So we write a function for DFS list. Okay. So for, uh, we are defining the DFS code now. So our function is DFS list. Not to get anything, so I declare it void. So it's going to take the source point, so that's int p. It is my source point. I declare a variable i, and because I'm going to run the loop for each and every vertex, but my function, I need my global variable. So I'm just testing it. You know my global variables. Now I declared another variable called reach to indicate whether I have reached a vertex or not. Okay, so now I will allocate it dynamically. I just copy paste and change this part to reach. Other things will remain the same. Now let us check. Reach of the first to Since I reached my first vertex, so I will make the reach of vertex as 1. If it does not reach, it will always remain 0 since I have made alloc. There a for loop for i equals to zero. I place the net i plus plus. And now what I'm going to find is a vertex present between p and i or not. So that's a find function. I've not declared the function right now. I'll declare it later. How to find a vertex? How to find whether an edge exists between the vertex or not? Okay. So that function will be declared later. But first of all, let us write this function. That if an edge exists between the two vertices, then we are going to check whether the edge is traversed or not by a reach end. If reach of i equals to equals to zero, then we have not traversed it. So then, what we are going to do is we are going to treat that it is my free edge, and we are traversing the edge just right now. Here is my recursive call to the DFS function again. Okay, so I'm recursively calling my DFS function from here. Since if I get a free edge, I again call the DFS function from here to start another DFS. Okay. So that's done. And this was a very basic part of the algorithm. Now we'll declare my find function where I write q and v. Exist in when we are not we're trying to find out that. So I am going to run a vertex till the degree of i. Okay, and i plus plus. I'm going to check if 
whether the adjacent to this job you at I equals to equals to B or not. I'm going to take that. If there exists an edge, so it will always be true and I will return 1. And if there is no edge, I will return 0. Okay. So that explains my find function. So I am mostly done with it and I write my DFS visit function right there. So now I see that there are some errors still now. Okay. So there's a DFS visit. I mentioned my source vertex. So now it is done. Let us check. Oh yeah, so it shows all my three edges. But there is some problem that it again shows everything plus one. So probably we have to change our code a little bit. So where I give that plus one? Yeah, I just remove the plus one from here. I just do I and V. In fact, I do the reverse V and I. It will look nice. Yeah, undirected curve doesn't matter at all, but then also. So, see, uh, so here it's done. I go from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, and then 3 to 4. So, this is my basic DFS algorithm with our basic DFS tree. And then it is a privacy disorder. So, yeah, it is done. But there is a problem with this algorithm that this algorithm will work only for connected graph. For disconnected graphs, this algorithm won't work. So what we do, we have to include another function to make sure that each and every vertex has been traversed at least once. So we write another function called DFS that will ensure that all the vertex has been traversed once and it will make the call to my DFS Okay. So I write another function called void DFS. It will not take any parameters. It will start by default from the first vertex. So I just write my for loop that from i equals to 0 to i less than n i plus plus. And I'm going to check that if a vertex is traversed or not. I'm going to check if breach of i equals to equals to 0 that's done so in the main also I have to change from DFS visit to DFS and now let us execute ah. oh my god now I've got a segment this is what happened let us check out Oh, I made a call to the DFS function. No, it should be made to the DFS visit function. Okay, so let us now begin executing. Ah, now see, yeah, it's done. And this is what we want. Right. Go to my DFS and we have finished the end of our program. If you think that you like this video, please show your support by hitting the like button and if you want to get more videos of this type, please do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.